Hey, what's up? Zach King here with a Motion 4 tutorial. This video is brought to you by FX Factory and their website, noiseindustries.com. I've got the link in the description of this video. They've got a lot of cool third party plugins for After Effects, Final Cut Pro, Motion, and their effects are really awesome, incredible quality, and go check out their website. At the end of this video, as a special thank you to them, and you'll probably love what you see there anyway. So on with the Motion 4 tutorial. And I'm going to go over the basics. So if you're new to Motion 4, this is a great tutorial for you. If you've kind of already dabbled in Motion or you're pretty proficient, then you can always learn new things from a video, but this is geared towards beginners. And if you really want to get more information, I do have a few training courses, a beginner's guide, and an advanced Motion 4 training course on my website, FinalCutKing.com, so check that out. But I want to show you here in this video a few things just by jumping into Motion, and that's the best way I find that people are learning. So I'm just going to delete this text. That was text here, and the first thing you're going to see here is the canvas. This has got the file name up here, Motion 4 Overview. That's what I've named the file. These are a lot of your tools that you're going to be using up here, especially this upper left area. Then over here we have three tabs, the file browser, library, and inspector. And as we work through, you're going to see what these tools do. But in my canvas, I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit project properties, which is command J. And I'm preset on DVC Pro HD 1080. So if I scroll up here on this list, you're going to see these are all your options that you can change. You also can do custom width and height by coming down to custom and you can put that information in here. You can also access your bit depth and all this other information. But in this tutorial, I'm just going to stay here. One thing you want to know, though, is the background color is black right now. I could select this and change the color wheel. I'm going to keep it black. And transparent means if I export this, whatever's on here will be seen and everything else will be gone. So if I keep it solid, the black will export, and that will be a color that is not going to be removable. So I'm going to keep it on transparent for now. Let's go ahead and click OK. Okay, let's go to our library, and I'm going to add a particle emitter. This is something when you first get motion, a lot of people just jump here and play around in it, so why not? I'm going to go ahead and add one of the cool things that you can preview up here. It's a Corona, and this is a fire-blazing, dragon-breathing smoke machine. No, it's just a round circle with fire. What you can do here is we've got this little HUD, the HUD. It stands for the heads-up display, and so it's right here. If it doesn't show up, you can hit this. And basically, it's a mini inspector. And we can always access more detail and information about our object over here in the inspector. And this is a particle emitter, so it has its own tab, the emitter. But there's also properties where you could change the position. And if I do this, you're going to see these numbers change correspondingly. Also, behaviors we could add to this. And right now, there is one added. And it's an oscillate, so we can change different things. This gets complex and we can uh, play with that a little later, but I'm going to go ahead just to our emitter and change the 3D because it's not actually in 3D yet. I can come up here and we can change this button. This is the Adjust 3D Transform tool and I can move this around. You're going to see it's actually flat and you're like, what? I bought Motion 4. It should we have 3D stuff in it? And so if I move the Corona around, there's nothing. Even if I switch it into 3D, if I hit Command 4 on my keyboard, it opens up a Layers tab and I can select it here and you're going to see this button status. It says it's 2D. That object means it's 2D. If I hit this, it's going to switch to 3D. There's three little papers on top of each other. Or I can also add a camera and it would turn into 3D or give us the option to. So I just hit Shift Z to open my canvas all the way and see everything, just like in Final Cut in the timeline. Same key command. Now, if I switch this around, it's still 2D, okay, but it's in 3D space. How we can tell is if I move the camera around, you're going to see a grid. Okay, that's a 3D grid. You can access that if you don't have it popping up by coming and checking the 3D grid option. So, still, yeah, it's not 3D because you didn't come into your emitter yet and check the 3D box. So if we check this, it is now 3D. I can move it around this way. And though it's still a thin particle, we can expand that a little later by going to the emission range. Okay, so give it a little more depth. Let's move our camera around and we can see that this is actually a 3D Corona fire now, okay? So there's our Corona. Now let's do something else here. I'm going to take away the view of the 3D grid. Let's keep our Corona fire up here. Let's go ahead and animate it. So I'm going to drag it here to when it animates on. 
that's the birth rate how fast it comes on like that because it's a particle so I'm gonna record from there to here so 98 frames into it and I'm gonna drag it down its position okay so now that is keyframing and that is when you are putting a beginning and an end point for an animation and that track you saw right here that's your keyframe there's two points and you could have multiple I could right click and add a point and bring the object all the way over here and as it plays it's gonna come down to the lower left now you see the little smoothing handles here I could change that and go into linear by right clicking and it's gonna be a solid edge but I like the smooth gives us these Bezier handles so I can make this nice okay let's add some text here we played around with the animation a little bit let's go ahead and text final cut king website okay so if we go to our heads up display check that we can do a few things here that's just nice and simple like our size the tracking is opening up the space between each letter and I'm gonna make the alignment centered we're gonna move that in here you can also use these tools here I'm not gonna get into these in this video here but you can play around with those there we go I'm gonna add something from the library here I'm gonna go ahead and add a behavior let's go to text animation let's go to text sequence actually I'm gonna to go to a I'm gonna to go to a rotate in I'm gonna drag it on top of the text or I could drag it on top in here and that's gonna be where the behavior is and it's going to rotate the text in I could shorten this if I want okay should also tell you that this project is defaulted at 300 frames and you can see that here currently I'm, I'm, I'm at my playhead is at 149 so if you want to render this real time sometimes your computer is going to be a lot slower playing these animations especially when you add a lot more content so if you hit command R it's going to render from the beginning it's going to tell you how many frames it's been rendering through right here if I stop it I can still play through how much it's rendered and so that's going to be playing back real time. That's Command R to render. I'm going to add one other thing here to the text. I'm going to come past here when we see it's in. I'm going to add a filter. And the filter is going to be a glow. I'm going to add the glow here this time so you can see how that works. Now, what if I want to change the color of this glow? Well, I can go to the inspector. Under the text tab here, there's a style option. And what we can do is add a glow here but this isn't the actual glow that is on this filter so what I want to do is use the outline and that's actually a little trick I have to make the glow of the color change go ahead slowly open the width so there's the glow color changing right there and let's take away the glow temporarily by unchecking this and we can see that's what it looks like without let's change the color to match the corona I'm gonna grab this eye glass we're gonna look here and I'm gonna check it back on now it's way too much so I'm gonna turn down the glow it's radius the opacity threshold and the softness well it looks like a complete blur right now right so what we can do is turn down the blur of the outline the width of the outline and you got a neat little effect right there with a hint of yellow so we can add a little shape here for fun I'm gonna add this shape and we're gonna make the fill color a yellow we're gonna rearrange it and put this behind the text now you're gonna see it's on top because the layers here just like Photoshop or another program whatever on top on these layers is going to be covering up the previous object so I'm gonna go ahead and lower this below the text Ah, but what's going on actually the problem is not that it, the layers are in order it's actually that in 3d space this rectangle is in front of us on the z-axis so it's towards us compared to the text so we can bring it forward by pulling this 
Now just design wise this looks terrible it looks like a blur so uncheck the outline and turn off the glow because it's a yellow glow on yellow and we could add a drop shadow here on the text and it does a lot more pop looks a lot better you can add a little bit of blur there on that drop shadow and that looks a lot better let's add an outline on this shape it's going to be let's go with a gray and you can barely see it so I'm going to go ahead and pull up the width and there we are okay so that is a really quick overview of motion for to export your project when you are finished what you're gonna do is go ahead and go up to file export now I could make a selection pull this in to 179 frames then go export selection which would be between this in point and this out point or I'm just going to export the entire project I have these options to configure what I want yes I want a QuickTime movie hit OK and I'm going to export and then I can use this file in Final Cut Pro so I hope that helped you an overview of Motion Forth it's your first time I know it's so much to cover but I hope I covered a, a little bit on the um, behaviors and the filters and adding text and then animating once again special thanks goes to the sponsor of this video Effects Factory check them out at noiseindustries.com I've got the link in the description of this video they make third-party plugins that are absolutely stunning. I've used them before for my film projects. I know tons of film majors that are using them. Um, they're big in the industry and they are legit. And they've even got some plugins for Motion 4. I'm Zach King. Check out my website at FinalCutKing.com and I'll see you guys in the next video tutorial. Take care.